Kia ora year 11 and 12. This is the second video I'm doing on improper integrals for revision for the AES exam if you're in the 13 MCA class and if you want for some AES content if you're in 12 MCA. So this video is just going to go through four examples. I want you to watch video one first where I go through really slowly how we define improper integrals and what they're all about. So the four examples are here. I'm going to do the calculations but then I'm also going to show you the graphs so that hopefully you get a bit of a feeling for what's going on with why some improper integrals do converge and have a value and some are not defined. So these are the four here. Um, apologies in advance, I'm using a new stylus and it's a little bit annoying and I think you're going to see the cursor which is kind of painful but there you go. Okay so pause and do them and then I'm going to work through each one and show you the graphs. Okay so starting with the first one We've got the integral between 1 and infinity, and I'll rewrite it now as x to the negative 4 dx. So we need to replace this limit of infinity with something else. So I've just used b, because that's what we usually use for our top limit of integration. But it doesn't matter what you use for that, really. Just don't use x. Okay, so we're just keeping the limit operator outside, and we'll do that at the end. So we do what we always do here, we up the power by 1, so we get x to the negative 3, and I need to multiply that by negative 1 third. All right, now I'm assuming you're confident with that if you're watching this video, but you can check, always check back by differentiating, that you're going to end up back with x to the negative 4. So that integration should be feeling pretty straightforward. So we've got the limit as b goes to infinity, now I'm going to substitute the stuff in, and write it in a slightly more useful form for our next step. So we've got negative one third, negative one over three b cubed minus negative one third, and then one to the power of negative three is just one. So there we go. Right, I'll clean up that middle expression or this one here. So just leave that like that for now. And now we've got plus one third. So the question is, does this converge at all? Well, let's have a look. When b gets really, really big, b cubed gets really, really, really big, and it's in the denominator of the fraction, so it's going to be negative 1 over a humongous number. So that limit is 0. And there's no b in here at all, so the limit as b goes to infinity of 1 third is simply 1 third. So that's a nice one where it does converge, the integral exists. So I'm going to really quickly show you what's going on with the graph for this now. So this is my graph of 1 over x to the power of 4. And I guess the thing that you notice is that it's heading towards 0, but it's doing it, so as x gets bigger, the value of f of x is getting really, really, really low, really close to 0, just a tiny bit positive. And that's why my integral converges. So here, this first picture shows you the area between 3 and 1. You can't quite see that from the graph, but that top limit is there. So the top limit of 3 already is giving me 0.321. So I'm getting really close to a third. In this next one, this is the integral between 10 and 1 of that same function. And you can see that I'm almost at 1 third, although obviously not exactly. Um, so that's that one. Right, let's look back now and do example 2. So example 2 looks, looks worse, but it's just another negative fractional power. So integrating this, I get the integral between 9 and infinity of 12x to the negative 5 over 2. I replace the infinity with a limit of b going towards that value. And now I do my integration, and don't worry about that limit just yet. So leave a gap for the coefficient. It's going to be 12 times something. So I'm going up a power, so it's x to the negative 3 over 2. Now, I don't want that coming out when I differentiate, so let's have a think about, sorry, when I integrate. We're going to need to times by negative 2 thirds here. Right, now the limits here are b and 9. 
I'm pausing because I think for some of you, you are probably watching this and you're still going to be making errors in these coefficients. So heaps and heaps of practice on those is worth it. Um, either using the textbook or using um, Dr. Frost is also a really good place to get those examples. I've done that really slowly and now I'm going to clean it up in that next line. Um, I know some of you will be watching going, yeah, that was way too slow. Well, that's fine. But for most of you, small mistakes in there are going to muck things up further on. Right, now I'm just about up to the point where I'm going to substitute in. But we leave the limit for the very end. So here we've got negative 8 over b to the power of 3 over 2 minus negative 8 times, now 9 to the negative 3 over 2. Again, I'm doing this really slowly. So that's what we've got now. negative 8 over b to the power of 3 over 2 plus 8 over, right, 9 to the power of 3 over 2, please don't grab your calculator, so 9 to the power of 1 half, so the square root of 9 is 3, and then I want to cube it, so it's 8 over 27. Lastly, we're going to apply this limit, so when b gets enormous, b to the power of 3 over 2 does as well, and it's in the denominator of a fraction, so that gives me 0 for this limit here, plus 8 over 27, right? So there's no B stuff in here, so it's not affected by B going to infinity. So again, the value of that integral is 8 over 27. It's saying that if I find the area under the curve between 9 going on forever, it's going to approach a value of 8 over 27. So here's the graph, for example, 2. And you can see, again, that it is washing off very quickly towards the asymptote. Um, I haven't done values for this one on, on graphs, but if you try them, you can do this in GeoGebra. If we go between 9 and 20, then we get a value of 0 0.207. Now that's quite far off still. Um, if we go between 9 and 200, then we're getting closer. So if you put 8 27th into your calculator, as a recurring decimal, that comes out to be 0 0.296 recurring. So you can see we're miles away still here. Uh, it's not, not nearly as fast as that first integral. So the second one um, is converging, but more slowly. And if we then change that and go um, to 2000, we get to 0.296. So we're getting pretty close. But either way, it's still converging. Now the next one, in example three, um, you should also have found that it converged. So here's example three. I'm already up to eight minutes, which is too long for you to still all be watching. Right, so we'll just have a look at why this one is bad. Well, this is bad because it's got a lower limit of zero, and you can't have three divided by zero, so we have to fix this one up. So the integral between 16 and zero of 3x to the negative 1 quarter dx can be rewritten as follows. It's the limit as a is getting really close to 0, but just above it. That's why we have that little plus sign. So integrating this and leaving the limit alone for now gives me 3 times. So I'm going to have x going up a power to 3 quarters. So I need to undo that when I differentiate it back. So we times by the reciprocal. And to those of you who are not doing all that working, that's fine, as long as you're not making mistakes with it. So here we've got um, 4x to the power of 3 quarters, which is going to be nice and easy to work out. So we're still not doing the limit until we've done all of those steps first. So 4 times, well, what's the... Um, x to the power of 3 quarters when x is 16. Well, the fourth root of 16 is 2, so it's times 2 cubed, which is 8. So 4 eighths minus 4a to the 3 over 4. Right now, applying the limit operator, there is nothing to do with a in here, so the first term is just 32. And what happens as a gets tiny is that a to the power of 3 quarters gets really, really tiny and positive. So this last one here 
is zero. So the limit of that term is zero. So overall, my area is going to be 32. Now for this one, I want to hop over to GeoGebra, hopefully, and show you with a slider what's going on. Uh, not going to work. Hang on a sec. I'll just go back and pause the recording to stop them. Okay, so hopefully this is going to work. Here's my GeoGebra window. And that's the graph there of the function that we're trying to integrate. Okay, and I'm going to move the slider now. So this is finding the integral going from 16 back and forwards. So I'm going to move the slider. And you can see, hopefully, you can see that that value is changing. So when I'm integrating from 16 down to 4.037, the value of the integral, the area is showing up on that curve, and it's 20.6, right? So as we move the value down, let's move right down, you can see that we're getting closer and closer to 32. So if we go all the way back to 0 0.01, we're getting very close to 32. So again, the integral exists, and it is going to converge to a, a limiting value of 32. So the last example is one where it turns out not to exist. Um, so we've got the integral from infinity to 64. So we replace the infinity with b. Here's 64, and we've got x to the one-third dx. And if you graph this in GeoGebra yourself, you will see pretty easily why it's not converging. All right? So I just wanted to put one in to give you a bit of practice where they didn't all work out really beautifully. So we've got three quarters, x to the power of four over three, between b and 64. So substituting that in, what do we get? Well, we've got three quarters of b to the four thirds, minus three quarters. Now this one we can do in our head. The cube root of 64 is four. Um, so we've got three quarters of four to the power of four. And when you work all of that out, what do we come up with? We'll just get some room here. So we're gonna go slowly with this one. So we've got the limit as b goes to infinity of 3 quarters of b to the 4 thirds. And there's no b in here, so this is just 3 times 4 cubed, 364, so that's 192. So here the best way to do it is actually to write it out. As b goes to infinity, um, 3 quarters times b to the 4 thirds is also going to infinity, so the limit doesn't exist. Right, so that number is just going to get really, really enormous. It's not heading to any fixed value. And so we can also say to be really clear that the integral doesn't exist. In other words, the area isn't well defined. Right, another very long video. Thank you very much if you've watched all 13 minutes. I bet you haven't, but that's okay. Um, those haven't turned up in the exams since they changed the curriculum, but they're very definitely in the AES syllabus. But more than that, they are just um, super cool things to understand and play around with. So do get GeoGebra out on your laptops and um, ask me if you need help with how to find the command for finding the integral and stuff like that.